Everyone knows success when they see it. It is easily recognizable. You notice it when you walk down the street. Whether it is how someone carries themselves or the clothes on their back. You read about it in the papers and see it on TV. You dream of success every day. But what really is it? At Mercy Hurst, they believe success is a product. A product that is created over time. A product that forms under intense pressure. A product that must be earned and can't be bought. Success is a product that takes blood, sweat, and tears. It's a product that must be built from the ground up, but never fully develops. You can lose it in an instant. Success is hard to earn, but even more demanding to protect. A task only a team can achieve. Everyone hates you for having it, but they will try to steal it for themselves. Success is a product of history and everything that has come before you. It is a product that will remain long after you're gone. It is your legacy your history. Are you willing to give your all like those before you to become a mere chapter in a long-standing tale of success? From the far corner to my left, We were concerned that Millersville might be a little slow out of the gate, but Millersville has played a pretty doggone good first half. That ball is headed out. There's a shot to the goal and in. Do you think it has what it takes to write history? to make sure coming off that field tomorrow we are one and oh and we're moving from strength to strength it is massively massively important to set the tone so the big thing for me tomorrow is everybody on in this team that's here now needs to be prepared to play big and do what's necessary 
is a 65 yard wide grass field. There's 115 long. Wilmington's head coach would text him the other night, he says it's not the best field, he says it's got like divots in it kind of thing. Okay? So I don't know what to expect, but I know this much, right? There is a lot of strong personalities and mentalities in this room. I don't care if they put us on concrete tomorrow, we find a way to win. If it has to be ugly, it's ugly. If it can be pretty and it can be nice football, then it can be that too. I don't care how we win, I care that we win. Now I'm not saying sacrifice what we're good at, I'm saying take care of business. There's a huge difference. Does everyone understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. First 15 minutes tomorrow, I want them tested in every possible way. Over the top, round the sides, if there is a 50-50 to win, we go and we win the 50-50. We do everything clean. Is anybody unsure on the setup for corners? Okay, so now is your time to educate me, because I'm done talking. Defensively, what are we looking for? Anybody, go ahead. How many channels are we defending? Three. 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 Okay, what do we always want on the ball? Pressure. Okay, if there's no pressure on the ball, what are we ready to do? Okay. Attacking wise, we win the ball back. What are we looking to do? Five channels as quickly as we can. Okay, and we're trying to move into them channels. One, two, three. One, two, three. Five. Riding with you fellas. I'm riding. I'm with you all the way. Me, Austin, Roscoe, Marchi, Riley, we're all with you. So push on as a group. The power is in the group. Let's get the fucking job done. Come on, take care of business, boy. Come on, take care of business, boy. Come on, take care of
on and out. We keep grinding, we keep going. Loud, loud. Mary Central Park, and then I think we're going to take the subway down to the 9-11 Memorial, uh, maybe hit up the Empire State Building on the way, but yeah, we're just going with the flow, seeing uh, where the big city takes us, so. Right? So we have to continue to do that. 
if we, if we can play, maybe we can try to play. Yes, it's gonna be harder to play, but I think it's doable, all right? So we can't complain about the pitch, we can't complain about anything else this trip. We just gotta go do the business now, all right? Let's not be a fucking dog. Sounds good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the first two games you had this weekend mark the beginning of the regular season. What are your takeaways from the two wins you had and the overall trip? So I think the trip went really, really well. I'm really happy with the way the guys travelled. It's not easy to, to travel six, seven, even eight hours um, on the road like we did. But I think the guys travelled well. I think they're very professional in their outlook. Um, we kept saying beforehand like this is a business trip and I think we, we treat the weekend like it was a business trip. Um, I thought we overcame a little bit of adversity when Goldie Beacon uh, tied the game at 1-1 and we found a way to power through and, and overcome that obstacle which were good. Um, I think the strength of the group really showed um, with the amount of players that we were able to utilise on, on Friday afternoon. And then I think against Georgian Court we, we knew that we were going to play a very, very motivated group um, who were looking to turn around an unlucky result against Gannon. So I think we did, we did really, really well to come out. Um, you know, put our best foot forward, you know, score some very good goals again. Um, and I think we had a, a big buy-in from everyone who stepped on the field and also everybody on the bench. I think it was a real, real team effort um, and I was happy with it, with the way we performed. We know that we're going to have to be better moving forward, but I was happy that we managed to get two good results um, and put some foundations in place for future performances. Yeah, so we know, you know, we know Lockhaven first off. Uh, we know they were a national tournament team last year, um, so they've, they've definitely got the pedigree to, to come here and to give us a very, very good game. Um, they'll be very dangerous. Um, they're zero and two right now, but I don't think that's reflective of, of how good that team is. Um, so we'll have to, we'll have to, you know, continue to improve on where we've been at over the last couple of games. We're expecting a very tough game on Wednesday afternoon. 
Um, and Ashland on Saturday night, they've just tied to the number five team in the country in, Millers, in Millersville, the team that knocked us out of the PSAC tournament last year. So we're expecting a very tough game there as well. And, you know, the mentality from the guys moving forward is, you know, we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared. We have to understand that, you know, we have to earn the right to play. Um, we have to make sure we're working in unison and we have to make sure that we, uh, you know, we execute our game plan, which is never easy in college. Um, so I think, you know, looking forward, it's, it's going to be it's two very, very tough games, two games that could have huge implications on our season. And, you know, we're going to definitely make sure we're as prepared as we can be and, and try and put our best foot forward into getting two very positive results this week. Gotta start positive when on the front foot. This is like a fucking cup final to them and we have to treat it exactly the same way. At zero and three, they are chasing for their season. And they know that. They've had Valerios for lunch at two o'clock, beat the fucking Valerios out of them. It's that simple, it's gonna be holding right here. Our fucking runner, our fucking worker, and any time there's a tackle to make, we fucking make it and we win. I'm not saying be disciplined. I'm saying getting people spaces. Make them uncomfortable. They've had a three and a half hour ride on the bus. They do not come here and dictate what happens on our field. That's simple enough. That don't need saying, but we'll say it anyway. Okay? Pressure on the ball. Do not let their centre back pick his head up and play a 50 yard ball. It doesn't happen today. So our front three have to be engaged. If the ball goes out for a goal kick, the three of them are pushed up from our midfield, our centre backs push our midfielders up, and we condense the field. Very, very simple. Okay? Throw ins, play out, time and possession. They don't have any of it. They don't have time and space today. It's that simple. We crowd them out of everything. We make them feel like they are being suffocated. Okay? When we're on the ball, move the ball in a one and two touch rhythm. Look to find width as quickly as we can. Or can we find an up to Jorge, a back and a through pass? Then that's where we're going to have success. Don't be afraid at times to clip the ball in behind and to go press on the front foot. Rather than overplaying in areas where we don't need it. Ask different questions of them. Can we find the ball on the right? Can we find it to the left and vice versa? Can we read the situation with numbers? Let's not go two verse five in a wide area. Can we work it back out and find where the space is? Okay, communication and competing throughout. Don't forget what gave us the ability to play on Friday and Sunday. It was an aggression. It was in people's faces. It was guys on our bench when we won a tackle or we won a throw in. They were up and they were clapping. We need that same stuff today. That has to be the makeup of every performance we have this season. That's the non-negotiable right there. Communication, hard work, making the team uncomfortable. Play our way with poison intensity, discipline throughout, positionally and personally. Discipline. Do not get stupid yellow cards. If they want to engage with you, just laugh at them and walk away and go play again. The best way to say fuck you to a team is to put them to the sword. That's when you get the laugh, that's when we get the laugh. After the game's done and we're one and for the day. Alright, there's a fucking big game here for us to win. Regional points, get a common opponent points, and for us to prove that we're not a two-game fluke. Alright? Get out there on the stage. Right, let's go. We have to get to the field. Let's go. Come on.
Come here, mind your feet. I'm going to give you a small bit of a fucking history lesson here, lads. 1990. Long time ago, Lockhaven came to here. Mercer beat Lockhaven 3 0. Coach of Lockhaven was chair of the regional committee, decided Mercer was not good enough to go to the NCAA. Last year, the coach, whatever that is, fucking 30 years later, the coach of Lockhaven decided Mercer was not good enough to go to the fucking NCAA. 30 years ago, that was this coach's dad. So I don't know if that's a fucking family thing that they got going on. But we are going to go out there in the second half and we're going to send a message to the rest of the conference when you come to fucking Erie and you come to Mercer, you're one day down when you get off the fucking bus. What I don't like, okay, is when we take things into our own hands. We know there's a shit ref, and we decide we're going to run our mouths. We decide, rather than looking at a situation and saying, you know what, a bit of maturity here is what might win us this game, we handicap ourselves. And we face the last 13 minutes of a the game, then bombing balls in our box. Why? We got a film session. Ashland Saturday. <laughs> but the, who took the time or was able to watch the game? First, uh, some part of the game. Okay, what are your thoughts? Not our best performance. Yeah, for it was beautiful. But why? I don't know. Composure was a big one. It's, that's a like, common theme since last year. What else? Our right winger is all the way in. Okay? It's a great night to make a statement. You can't wish for anything better. <laughs> Seven o'clock game, Saturday night, football aren't here, there's been no football game. You get the opportunity to make noise tonight as a group. And they, them opportunities are few and far between. Now, I'm not asking you to go over the arousal curve. I'm asking you to have a disciplined, aggressive performance where you use the ball effectively, where you win the tackles, you leave the refs alone. We've been through this all week. This is the last time I'm telling you. Referees are left alone, okay? Want to know after tonight? Don't worry about anything else. Own the night. That's all we want you to do tonight. Own the night, individually and collectively. Be the best you can be. Play big, play for each other. Let's get the fucking... <laughs> Hello guys. too slow, we were a little bit sloppy, we didn't look after the ball properly, 
I don't remember too many pullbacks, too many crosses, too many shots in a box. Um, it wasn't an us performance. So, credit that we managed to find a way to get back into a game and draw a game. But we need boys on every single game. Because exactly what he said is exactly right. When we don't show up willing to do the hard parts of the job, everybody, we're average. First opportunity to send a statement in conference. John talks about mini seasons all the time. This is our proper season now. We've done the job so far in our non conference. We now have to do the job in the conference. It is that simple. So today is the day that we make a statement and we get a win. And we go home happy. Alright? It has to be that way. You've already seen other results. We don't pay too much attention to them, but we do know them at the back of our mind. We win today, we're putting our foot strongly into you know, first position. Right? Play with a decisiveness and being clinical. Okay? If you're gonna do something, if you're gonna live and die by a decision, do it. In the first fucking 10 minutes, said, get on your bike first 10 minutes. Didn't do it. Alright? Didn't fucking do it. Get on your bike. Somebody gets it, they lift their head up. Go! Just fucking go! Don't care if you're gonna get it. They're gonna go with you. And then we room to fucking play. Okay? We need to get fucking better quickly here. That's poor. By our own fucking high standards, we need to make a fucking statement on the second half. Agreed? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So let's fucking get after it. And let every... I want to see somebody fucking go in there, man, ball, everything goes in the back of the fucking net. Right, let me start by being a miserable bastard and I'll put a positive spin on it and I'm not very good at that but I will. We have to defend a lead better for that last four minutes. We're very fucking nervy. It could have been a handball. Austin said it probably was. Okay, so we might have got away with one. But I tell you what, the one team who came to fucking play today, it weren't them. Okay? It was not them. And you kept your heads, you kept plugging away, you kept believing and ultimately you got your goal. Oh hey, I'm sorry. Did I put you on your knees when I jumped on your back? That's a big fucking man jumping on your back. I'm fucking sorry. I don't know what came over me. Okay. It's the fastest I've run. I did have the GPS on. I was on all of you fuckers tonight when we upload them. Okay, but we have to understand something. If you can grind out results, first of all, I want to say this, right? In football, we could have Franklin Pierce here, who are number one in our super region, and you could run less in that game and get a result than you did today. Every initiation of a play was by us. The only way they were going to score was a counter-attack, which Gomzi, you came up fucking huge on that one. Fucking huge fella. Right. So we can all, we can all go like this to Dylan and Mark and all them guys, but again, I'm going to say it's a fucking team effort, and that's a fucking massive save. Right? We found a way to win. Gannon didn't find a way to win when they came to Gannon's house. Okay? Now, I'm not comparing us with Gannon because I just think we're fucking better. But you have to compare yourself with teams in your league and in your conference. We found a way today, and that's good. So we celebrate it. We look at it for what it is, and we understand we have to be better. Because I'll be honest, I don't think anybody was 8, 9 out of 10 today. thought we had some good performances, but I think, you know, execution in final third again, maybe, maybe lacking a little bit. 
but we found a way to fucking win, and that's what matters at this part of the season. You are halfway through the regular season, you are 8-0-1. Okay, so half of the season is gone. If we do it in, you know, segments, we're happy with what we've done, but we know we can be better. So please, let's celebrate this, let's enjoy it, but let's realise we have to be better moving forward. Um, I think another big one was, was the Seton Hill goal. Again, Dylan managed to get it for us. Um, we're knocking on the door, we're knocking on the door. Um, and it was just about perseverance again. It was about believing that we were going to do it. And I think every every guy that you know was was representing us that day, you know, whether they were on the bench um, or they were playing, they believed that we could still win that game, even when it was you know proving difficult. And Seton Hill were having guys go down with cramp and and all that kind of stuff. You know, I think we I think the guys believe in what we're doing here. So. a lot of tendencies through his goals that conceded, the way they play, and if anyone's been to watch their games this year, they step high, alright, and to what we've seen is probably one of the worst traits about them, is because they're very, very slow, alright, so like we said yesterday, the first 15 you're going to ask questions of, you're going to turn them at every opportunity, the left side, Lenny 29, Bouty number 5, if you turn it over their heads, they start to panic. So every opportunity, but here's what Cal PA feel to do. Wingers and strikers usually need to be starting in between those gaps. In between right back and centre half, in between centre halves, and in between left back and centre half. You need to stay high, start in those positions, and then your movements need to be intense and sharp at the right moments. I've got 24. Because you, Alfred's out. Alfred's out, he's out. There's definitely been 7-7 seven, seven yesterday. Doggy dog. How are we? Good mate, you. Hi. What number's Frank gonna be? Uh, I think I brought the twenty-five. Thank you, sir. I think. Cheers. Thank you, brother. All good. How are we, mate? All good. Yeah. You see the badgers of Newcastle putting on a fucking show. <laughs> six one or something. Is it six one? Five one. Okay. I've seen up to four. You can't be in the worst time then, you know. That's some sunscreen to give you another fucking shade and that's a fucking big hair of yours or what? Hey, you're not going to put makeup on him, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shine. That's what you should do, Riley. You should get Marty involved, makeup artist. Alright, so today is a big match against Gannon, the Erie rival. What are your expectations for your boys going into the game? We know it's going to be a tough one. Um, playing Gannon's always difficult with them, you know, just being down the road. They've got a good record, we've got a good record. Um, there's no secrets between what they're going to bring and what we're going to bring. Um, we get to see a lot of each other. Um, so it'll be, it'll, it'll be a good game, it'll be a tough game. Um, it'll be physical, I think it'll be a fast paced. Um, and both teams know what's at stake and on the line. So there's, uh, there's a lot riding on this one. Yeah, John. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's just another huge opportunity, isn't it? As we talked about it the other day, respect the opposition, respect the game. And I can tell you, boys, the history of Mercyhurst and, and Gannon better than anybody. And I can tell you right now, what's sitting over in that locker room is very fucking nervous about what's sitting in this locker room. That I know, that I can prove to you. A lot of those players have fucking played for me in the summer. I'm well aware of what they're like. If you want to fucking take on this, I have no doubt you'll be successful. They are not at the same level as you, but like Austin says, when you have a chance to leave a fucking tackle in the first five minutes, you absolutely fucking take that opportunity. You don't shirk your responsibility on either side of the ball, and you go after everything. They cannot fucking live with you if you don't want them to live with you. They will be very nervous walking out. They need a result. I mean, so just first five, ten minutes, like Austino says, let's make a fucking statement. Let's make a huge statement. But right now, we are the best team in this town. For many years, if you're better than Gannon, you'll be fucking good. And it's the same again this year. You are better than him. Just go out and prove that you're better than him.
lots of regards to be quite honest. You know, one it up, playing against a tough wind, no rivalry. Happy enough, but steady lads. I mean our back four needs to be a little bit steady, you know, we're trying to clear balls and we're flaking legs at them and we just gotta be a little bit more composed. But first and foremost now we'll go after the second half. The next goal is really, really important. We get it, it's gonna be really fucking difficult for them to come back. Alright? But we gotta know. First 15 minutes of the second half, we just gotta go at them and show them in the game. They've thrown everything at you, that's they have nothing to show for it right now. Shenanigans, part two. Get out! Oh my goodness! Catch up! Bring the catch! Straight to the guy. He's like, that's pretty good. He's like, wow. Alright, so we'll start off with a recap of the Gannon game. It was pretty successful, in my opinion. How about yours? Yeah, I think we played well. I think we definitely played better in the second half. Um, I think the first half, we knew that Gannon and ourselves would come out with lots of energy. Um, and it would be kind of a test of wills by both teams. Um, I think if I were to talk about the first half, I would say that for me, Gannon had the edge on the first half, um, just in terms of the chances they created. Um, and then I would say that, you know, while they did create chances, I think the guys did well to kind of hang in there, weather the storm a little bit. You know, we were playing against the wind as well first half, which is, which is never easy, and it definitely wasn't that day. Um, we managed to execute on a corner, which which were great from Dylan to Axel, um, and then I think the message at half time was: Listen, you know we're in a good position. What can we do in the second half that's that's going to put us, you know, in an even more promising position? And I think we came out second half, and I think we were, you know, much the better team in the second half. Um, I think we created a lot of chances. I think we've had a goal disallowed that, for me, is never offside. Um, having watched it back, um, and I think we played. Uh, more characteristically of how we have in other games as well. But we knew Gannon were going to be a tough game. Gannon are a good side, um, there's no doubt in that. So for us, it was about kind of hanging in there a little bit and making sure that we put our best foot forward, you know, for the full 90 minutes, you know, not just 45, not just 60, but the full 90. And I think, you know, we did that, which, which made me proud. Good afternoon and welcome into our coverage of Seton Hill University men's soccer on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Today the Griffins welcome one of the best teams in Division II, the Mercyhurst Lakers come to town. Sean Myers, Jack Reidenauer here at Dick's Sporting Goods Field on the campus of Seton Hill in Greensburg. And Jack, for the Griffins, they've been on a nice run, well positioned to qualify for the postseason. Haven't clinched yet, but they are certainly very likely headed to postseason play here in the PSAC, but they're going against one of the best teams that, as we mentioned, they will see 
all season long. Mercyhurst comes in a dominant program, 13-0-1. The Griffins on the other side, 6-7-2. However, winners of four of their past five, and the other match was a tie last time out against Gannon, so the Griffins have not lost in their past five matches. If they can extend that, then they have done something right as Seton Hill gets an early opportunity, but well defended as Fletcher Amos denied that opportunity. Yeah, the Seton Hill team right now, Sean, is starting to heat up at the perfect time of the year with playoffs right around the corner. But I think this Griffins team also, they have revenge on their mind from earlier this season, losing to Mercyhurst 1-0. And it was a very close game, a big defensive battle with Dylan Sumner eventually breaking open that 0-0 tie. But we'll see how Seton Hill responds again defensively against the number two ranked Mercyhurst Lakers in all of NCAA Division II. Play, and they have a defense that is almost unbelievable, Jack. They have conceded just three goals this season. Their starting keeper, Jonathan Gomes, his numbers, it's really, I think, almost unparalleled. He's 12-0-0. His goals against, this is not a misprint, 0 0.09 and a 967 save percentage. He has eight shutouts this campaign. We mentioned that this team just gives up absolutely nothing and now the Griffins are going to have to find at least one goal so that comes just shy of nine minutes into this opening half number two ranked team in division two Mercyhurst here looking to continue their winning ways yeah this one's starting to get a little out of hand another ball that just slips past the defense and then a casual chip shot that gets past the sprawling Bobby White in goal. Again, if you're Bobby White, you have to be pretty frustrated. <laughs> well, another clean sheet, another win. Can't get better than that. UPJ next. We win that. Regular season champions. <laughs> Uh, right, you got the message about tomorrow. We know what we need to do, right? It's got to be done professionally tomorrow. It's got to be done properly. Okay? I want a conference title and I want a fucking explanation point after it. Because we took care of business and we did it the right way. That's what matters. Okay? That's all I've got for you. You know where we're at in terms of where we need to be. Wall the wall, no! Just a beautiful Friday in Erie, PA.
he's just and understandably so because it's the third time that it would, it has happened. Yeah. Understanding that he has a mental block, yeah. but I think I believe in him more than he believes in him. Probably. Um, yes. So to be safe, yes, out for Saturday. Um, then say the six. I'll have three across the zone. One, two, three, and the six. <laughs> and then we'll have three. Where have I give? One, two, I'll give job. One. Two and three in the cookie. If the ball's from here, you're gonna be here. Okay? Wait, man, what's here now? I give. Can I give who, who's on these three? You three? Okay, so you haven't got one yet? So then the second three, one, two, three, Alfie, we're doing this job. We have someone on the keeper, so this is the one they sacrifice and they drop. It's a good training week, only two days to go from uh, UPJ, so yeah, I think we're ready to go, mate. We'll find out tomorrow anyway. Sometimes it gives us a hard time. Like he's staying for the second one. What the fuck are you doing, man? You're either on the bus or you're off the bus. Making a little bit of a post practice meal, pre game dinner for tomorrow's big one. Chicken and rice to go to. Have some healthy. Well. It's a big game tomorrow, one that we're going to win. Uh, has a big uh, NCAA tournament uh, predictor. That's not the word, but contentions. That's the word. Big NCAA contentions hanging on to it. Uh, if we win, it's almost a guaranteed spot into the tournament. Doesn't really matter what we do in the PSAC, but we will win the PSAC tournament. And we will go to nationals, and we will win nationals, and I will shave my head when we nationals. Exactly. Number two in the West. Listen, they want they they want to prove that they're fucking worth something, right? We know we're the better team. Let's be real. Here. We know we're the better team. We know we've got the better players. We have to go out and fucking prove it again now, and that's what's hard. But there shouldn't be nervous energy about that because that's what you've done all year fucking long. You've trained well, you've pushed on. Every challenge that's been put in front of you, you've found a way to conquer it time and time and time and time again to the tune of 16 games. So fucking do it again. Put your chest out and do it again. Tonight is a night where we put together our best 90 minute performance of the season. And just like he said, tonight for us starts playoffs. It's that simple. We're the best team in the area, and tonight we're going to leave no doubt. At the back, it is clean and it's concise. There is going to be a skip off this turf. This could turn into, very quickly, a game of mistakes. So limit the chance of us making mistakes. If it has to go, it goes. I'm not saying don't play. Absolutely fucking not. But what I'm saying is be smart about it. There's areas to play, and there's areas not to play. The, re the reward of us playing higher is that we're closer to goal and they make more mistakes. The reward of us playing lower in our defensive half and making mistakes gives them a higher chance of reward. So be aware of that. Play what the game gives us. First 15 minutes we turn and we keep asking questions. We keep getting runners beyond. If the pass doesn't work out, we close fucking space immediately. Okay? I don't want any questions on that. Our energy level has to fucking surpass theirs by at least 50% tonight. And if you do that, there's one team fucking wins. And it's you lot. And deservedly so. So go out there and prove it. Everything we do tonight, we are in their face. They want to make it a, a chippy game. We don't fucking get involved with the referees. We're too good. We don't need to.
we cannot, under any circumstances, lose our head. Oh, Percy Hurstful, his 18th of the season, scored by number seven, Shia Attitude is fucking first class. We keep going, we keep going, we keep going, and who fucking knows what's going to happen? But the world is your oyster right now, and enjoy the ride, lads. So I know at the beginning of the season you said you had four goals, I believe. I think we've hit one of them. Would five. You like five goals. Five goals. Would you like to go through those goals and like say where the progress is on that? Yeah. So we have, uh, you know, we have five goals every season. Number one is to try and win every game that we play in. So right now, 17 games in, we're 16-0-1, oh, so we've, we've done pretty well on that so far. The second one we accomplished after eight games in conference, which was to win the regular season championship and to be back-to-back -back PSAT West regular season champs, so we did well there. Um, and, you know, the first goal that I just mentioned a second ago, you know, we've got a chance to finish the season undefeated when we play Slippery Rock um, in the final game of the regular season here on Saturday, so we hope to do that. Um, and then our final three goals are winning the PSAC um, conference tournament, winning the regional tournament, and then winning the national title. Um, and I say this to people all the time, you know, people go, oh, Ozzy, you're crazy. Well, somebody's got to win it every year. So why not us? I was just hoping if he bites, yeah. he's not going to get there. But he did bite, he's still gone. Come on! Why are you passing that to another pink? Right, so that'll be the standard now. He says out, you can find the six, and everybody in there is out. Understood? Yeah. Yep. Perfect. All right. Teams in pink, Friedlander. Becca, Grzywa, Binkowski, Lovett, Sajlov, Cedarberg. Okay, blue. Leisure, Axe, Summer, Punch, <laughs> Sounds like a winning team to me. Yellow, Prezioso, Brendan, Naguki, Touchback, JJT, Chase It and Gregsy. Ross Stewart, Reserve. Nobody wants Ross Stewart, the Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got a really important question for you guys. Yeah. Is that on campus? Yes. Yes. Where? In the student center. How far is that? Can I walk there? It's like at the top of the hill. So go I go up. left out the door? Yeah, go left yeah. out the door. Go up okay. kind of to the top of the hill and then hang a right. What's it called, Maddie? What's the name of it? The, the students. Just like Robert something student. Listen, it's our day. It's our conference. It's our fucking game. I don't care what they put us on. They can put us on fucking asphalt outside for all I care. We're better than Slippery Rock. Okay, you know we're better than Slippery Rock. All we've got to do is go out and prove it. Is it going to be tough? Yeah. Is it going to be difficult? Absolutely. Are you going to get a knock and a bang? Yes, you are. But you know what? That's normal. That's the price of winning. It's what you've given all season. So just go do it again. Okay? Go do it again. Come off this field and make sure that we're fucking smiling. And make sure that every one of you goes down in history for the right reasons. Okay? As a team that were 10-0 in conference. The team that were undefeated. And you fucking got that. 
because you've done it all season long, take confidence in that. Convincing win again, undefeated regular season, that's all lovely. So when you go out tonight and you celebrate this as you should, maybe you have four or five years, not fucking ten. You know, because you have to push on now and you have to reward yourself for the hard work. And again, Ryan Leisure, I've been around a long time. I've seen teams fucking not do well because they've got to go a little bit billy big time on themselves. All right? There's still a fucking ton of work to be done and there's games to be won. So you have a few days off now, which is nice, but... The discipline is the important thing that we're fucking pushing on. Credit to you, have broken records already for Mercer's that have stood for a long time. But we continue to break them. And we fucking don't let down, we don't fucking start thinking we're brilliant. We're humble and we fucking press on and we go do something. And it's important that we do that. So just be aware of that, you know, enjoy yourselves as you should. But be aware that there's a fucking another prize and another prize and another prize. And this team, in my opinion right now, there's only one team capable of beating you and that's your fucking self. So if you're disciplined and you keep working hard, you will have success. So well done on a regular season. Give you credit for that. I want to stress the importance of doing what we've done all season, which is just focusing on the next game. So obviously we find out tonight who the winner of East Stroudsburg and Westchester is, so we have to be prepared for uh, for, for one or the other. Um, and we have to make sure that we keep you know, hammering home what, what we want our identity to be and how we want to play. What does the experience of a seasoned coach like John Melody bring to the staff? Uh, it's huge. John is, um, <laughs> John is the little... Uh, John is the little woodpecker sometimes that sits on my shoulder and he'll tap away at my at my uh, at my face and and put ideas in my head and and ask questions sometimes tough questions but he he definitely he asks thought provoking questions um, he always has ideas and to be fair to John John always said it's an assistant coach's role to uh, to have ideas and to put them forward and it's a head coach's mm -hmm. you know um, role to to make decisions and to go with those decisions and to own those decisions. Um, so yeah, I've got nothing but respect for John. John's obviously, you know, he's he's part of the wallpaper wallpaper at this place. Um, his record speaks for itself. He's a great human being first and foremost, and you know he um, he lo again another guy who loves the program, loves the program, wants to see the program have success for you know not just this year but years to come, and and that's you know that's what we all want. You know that's what we all want. We don't want this to be. Um, to be one good year in a regular season and and you know fall short in 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 other you know other areas this season and then other areas in seasons to come you know we want to continue we want continued success we want um, alumni such as yourself when you graduate to look back on this place with pride and to want to come back to alumni games and um, you know and and to be recognised for what a good program Mercyhurst is um, and to have pride in in the badge and. Everything that that everything that comes with that. So, yeah, John's massive to what we do. John's massive. He, he, um, just his experience alone and and some of the uh, some of the questions he asks me on a regular basis definitely uh, definitely get me thinking and definitely you know challenge our staff and and I think that's a great thing. Yeah, it's rewarding. Um, you know, we we thought that that Coach Osborne could do this when we hired him. Um, we believe that Mercy Hurst men's soccer was resourced to compete for championships and NCAA tournaments year in and year out, and unfortunately we had gotten away from that recently. So, um, you know, we knew it would take a little bit of time for Coach Osborne to come in and rebuild the program, and he hasn't wasted any time. So to see where they are now, um, it's it's the fruits of his labor, and, and it shows hard work pays off. And, you know, we knew we had the right guy when we hired him, and uh, I think Ryan's proven that this year. Well, not not a too early wake up, but I think we're back on. The <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, I'll carry on. I think we're on the road again at nine forty-five. Getting some breakfast at the hotel. Um, driving straight to Bloomsburg. We think we only get an hour to train. That's right, yeah. yeah. If we get an hour to train. Um, get showered up, and then back to the hotel where we'll be spending the next few nights. Yeah, I like being here. I did it like five minutes before I told you that I was like... No, no, but I, I, you just stopped cutting my hair and you started walking around me like... <laughs> just it wasn't right. And I'm thinking, what is he doing? There's <laughs> always something going on. You're like, yeah, I messed up. I'm thinking, surely not. Do you want to tell the, the people what I did to you? Just don't go to him and put a hole in the back of your head. <laughs>
that's a, that's a very good price though. Yeah, very free, you know, take the plane. Yeah. Let's figure out roles then. Sometimes they leave three. So let's start with one. When they leave one, we do what we regularly do. If they leave two, I want me and Lockie. You Lockie. Goal side and then Juju. Juju. Where Lockie normally is. And then maybe and then you come Sean, around the edge. And then yeah. Sean goes bridge player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All the short ones. All right. If they bring three. Then I think Ben would be the third. Sean, you still the bridge. Still bridge. You still Yeah, same front. back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we would we know our role if they have three, yeah. two, and one. Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah. What do you guys say? Give him a Riley, ask Dino some questions. What's it been like traveling with men's soccer? Ask him. <laughs> yeah. He's doing a documentary of oh, the whole season. I'm about to tell you. Not the chair, Come on, come on, get close. I'm not afraid of the camera. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> it's, it's so far has been a pleasure uh, to have these guys. They are fantastic. Every last one of them. They all have different personalities, and uh, not to mention the places that uh, they were born and originated from. And I'm learning a lot about them. I'm learning a lot. They are great. I think the coaching staff is good, uh, magnificent. Like I always say, um, you know, it could be a good trip. It could be a weird trip. It could be a bad trip and uh, everything in between. But these coaches are, uh, they make me feel like family. And, uh, matter of fact, everybody makes me well, feel Well, Dino, like now you've said that, we'll get you dinner. <laughs> <laughs> what else can I get for tomorrow? Um, <laughs> keep going, keep going. But it's, uh, it's, it's magnificent. I, um, I'm having the, the time of my life. And, uh, this is just what I need. I've been working really hard. But a trip like this, uh, they've really made things easy easy to get along with and it's nothing I won't do for them. So I'm wishing them the best. I know we're gonna be number one when we walk when we leave this place, we're gonna be on top. And I already know that. See you know, see you know, see you know. Don't put that anywhere. <laughs> Are you actually, did you write that? Very dangerous. Did you get that? Is that attack? All right, boys, another game, a playoff game. The wait's not a week, it's a year, all right? And I think we're much stronger than the last time we came up to this stage and that we're more ready than ever, all right? Now, the message doesn't change. It's worked for 18 games, okay? We know who we are, we know our, our identity. We're very good going forward. We don't concede and we fight for each other. All right, now, the value of clean sheets, the value of being together is last year, if you remember, we needed three or four goals to win a game. Last year, we played a semi-final game with four or five or six guys injured. This year, this year, we're healthy. This year, we don't concede. They played 110 minutes. 110 minutes in the legs, roller, roller coaster of emotions, travel, and now they're playing the number, number two team in the country. Again, it's about what we do. It's all about us, this game. Everything is about <laughs> us. Start on top in this one. We'll face Bluesburg on Sunday here at Steph Bettet Stadium. So we'd expect this one to be a great matchup between the two sides. Good turn there from Summer. Settles it back.
Summer into Freelander. Good job of the shoulder here from Kerrigan. And it will be a penalty for the Lakers here. As Kerrigan with that last skipping touch. Pass McKinney. And a great opportunity for the Lakers to open up the goals for this game here. Kerrigan looking to increase his goal tally to the season. Stepping up to the plate. And it's slotted away beautifully in the bottom corner. As he runs to the stand now. And his players joining him. With confidence, he places this one home for the Lakers. And they go 1-0 up against East Strasbourg here at Steph Petter Stadium. here from Kerrigan as he's hungry and another penalty is one kind of tricky tricky player just manages to cut the ball away at the last minute as his defender attempts to tackle him and as you can see there it's very clever from the number seven to Mercy Hurst and again here he steps into the plate to go. Shoots again. In the same spot. Higher this time. And the celebrations match. Very impressive stuff from the Irish International. by Summer, reaching behind a great first touch, and it's buried into the bottom left corner. A single finish there for Mooch. Another international for the Lakers from Germany. A great finish there. Slotting it home. Right side of the keeper. Mercyhurst now with three. Zero up. Over the Strasbourg side. In this piece at semi final. on the east side of the piece that we like to battle, try and make um, games tough. Um, so we knew if we start with a lot of energy and come out fast, um, overrun them, outwork them, and I think um, our quality was going to outshine theirs. And uh, that's what happened throughout the game. So. Yeah, I thought the boys were excellent on Friday. Um, I think attacking and you know defence I thought was excellent. Um, Everyone did the jobs, and we, uh, you know, we, we kept our identity, which we've done all season. So um, I think if we keep doing that, you know, we'll be fine. And Friday was a prime example of, you know, how good a team we are. Oh, awesome! I'm ecstatic that Mercyhurst took him in as a family, and he's grown here and he's excelling beyond anybody's expectations. 
Ähm, Haus Ossibau. <lacht> Sorry, Ossi, what? I think we limit we limit the set pieces and I don't think their group is too special. Nothing we haven't seen already. Um, besides the long throw in, that's pretty much all I can see. Now granted, that's if we show up. We can't come into a game, think we've already won it and expect the team to lay over. That's not gonna happen, it's the playoffs. We show up, we do our game, we boss our opponent, and I see us holding a piece at the end of the day. All right, thank you. Any last words you got? Nah. Let's go win a fucking championship, boys. All right. So far, I think no one in the league deserves to be in this spot more than us. Hey, the season so far, something to be special and really proud about, all right? Now, that's what we did. Now, the culmination of it, okay, it's still a final, and we have to earn it again, all right? We earned, the, like I said, the right to be here, but now we have to earn winning this trophy and taking it home. Okay, today we have another opportunity to add a chapter into this fucking program. And it's another opportunity for you lot to be proud of yourselves, one another, and your families. Okay? Let's go out and let's take care of fucking business. Okay? Follow shots in, and we fucking do not leave here without being champions of this league today. Have you fucking got that? Yeah. yeah. Come on, let's take care of business. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Talk, have grit, have endeavour, and go win the fucking game. All right? Come on, let's go! go. Again in my summer, they headed away nicely by Hollis. Is this quick out to pressure him again now? Ball back in though, and it's in by Mercyhurst, the number 16. Ball hey, Talada Torres, and as consecutive headers there in the box, flick onto the back post, just gets that last touch, and Ripple with no chance there. Mercy Hurst opened up this final. 1 0. Just 10 minutes gone here. Leesburg have to keep their heads. Maintain focus. Encouraging from Mercy Hurst.
there we have it the PSAC champions Mercyhurst Lakers their final record 19-0 and won this season remain unbeaten that will kick off November 10th through the 13th on campus sites. 19 of the 40 teams earned automatic bids to get into the playoffs, while the other 21 will earn at-large berths based on their regional rankings. The quarterfinals will also be held on campus sites November 17th through the 20th, and the semifinals and national title game will be played December 1st and 3rd at Interbase Soccer Stadium in Seattle. Here it is, the 2022 D2 Men's Soccer Bracket, starting with Super Region 1. Next, we have Mercyhurst as a host. This team is 19-0 and won this season, led by Sean Kerrigan, who ranks second in the nation in goals and goals per game. This is also the second-ranked scoring offense in D2. Kerrigan and this high-powered offense will face post in the second yeah, round, yep. as both teams received a first-round bye. So Dylan, able to win at the PSAC tournament here the other day. What are your feelings after being able to claim that for this team? Um, and the whole team's buzzing, I'm buzzing. Uh, last year, unfortunately, we lost in the semi-final, so we knew this is kind of our revenge now. We said this year we want to go win it all. Um, we won the regular season, we said we wanted to win the, uh, win the PSAC. Uh, we made that happen, so um, on to the next thing now. A big piece of history for you personally this season. Last year you won the Conference Rookie of the Year, and this year you won the Player of the Year. What does it mean to you to be able to have both of those trophies already to your name? Um, I mean, it's nice, but there's a handful of boys who could have won, you know, Player of the Year this year. So, I mean, I'm happy. I'm sure they're happy for me. I would have been happy for them. Um, but it's more for the team now, you know. So we've had a good year, um, unbeaten so far. So long may it continue, really. Looking ahead at the matchup coming up for you guys, what are your thoughts about just not getting into the tournament, but also being in the position that you're in going forward? Um, I mean, it's going to be nice to play a new team. Um, I always said last year, this year, you know, in the conference and that, we play a lot of the same teams. We know a lot about them. We know the players. Um, we don't really know anything about post. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a challenge, but one we're uh, definitely looking forward to. And then having the chance to play on Saxon Stadium, it must feel like a pretty big advantage for you guys. Yeah, I mean, we wanted definitely top seed so we could host this game. Um, I mean, we wouldn't have mind first or second, but, you know, third, that's what we got. So um, hopefully we can host, get a few people out there watching, um, and, you know, win the game. Awesome. Yep. Thanks so much. Thank you.
Yeah, I think for me, boys, is uh, it's history. You know, you've had an undefeated season. That's history. You know, you've run the fucking gauntlet with the conference playoffs. That's history too. We continue to make history. And I think the more people that are involved, the more history you can make. So at the start of the season, all that was really involved was, was what's in this locker room. And we made history. But I can tell you now from the texts I've had, the phone calls I've had, the emails I had, you have, you have a, an alumni behind you, you have a school behind you just to keep making fucking history. And the more times you think about today and you get fucking fouled badly or the referee's a fucking wanker and it'll all happen. You just think of all the people that are fucking trying to create history with you and all the people that are lifting you up and fucking willing you on so as we do create history. There's a wonderful fucking presence in this room. There's wonderful talent in this room. There's great fucking history in this room. Make sure that we get the history that we fucking want, need and fucking deserve because that's how good we are. So every minute today, it's not just 11 of you on the field, it's the guys on the bench, it's the coaching staff, it's the administration. There's a whole fucking school behind you for almost 100 years waiting for you guys to make history. And the more of us that want to make history, the more of us that will make history. So go out there and make fucking history today. I wish you well. Never be defined by one game. Okay? Three of our five goals we met this year. That's no easy feat. We said go undefeated in regular season, we've done it. We said win conference, we've done it without conceding a goal. We said win the conference tournament, we've done it. Okay? You've got a lot to be a you got a lot to be proud of. Alright? The school's proud of you, the program's proud of you, alums are proud of you. Be proud of each other. Give each other a little bit of grace. All right, come on, get in nice and tight. Let's get out of here. Well done. Keep your fucking heads up. First off, three. One, two, three. First.